Yes, Revelation 11. Someone to read Revelation 11. Revelation 11. This is now where it gets juicier. Kuna wase wana kam. Wana fanya vitu zingine noma. Revelation 11, you can start verse 1 to 6. Revelation 11, 1 to 6. If you just get there, please start reading. Revelation 11, 1 to 6. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, so I'm reading from the New King James Version. Okay. And it says, Then I was given a reed like measuring rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God, the altar, and those who worship there, but leave out the court which is outside the temple, and do not measure it, for it has been given to the Gentiles, and they will take they will tread the holy city under foot for 42 months and i'll give you power to my two witnesses and they will prophesy 1260 days clothed in sackcloth the, these are the two olive trees and two lampstands standing before god of the earth and if anyone wants to harm them fire proceeds from their mouth and devours their enemies and if anyone wants to harm them, he must be killed in this manner. These have, these have power to shut heaven, so that no rain falls in the days of their prophecy. And, that, and they have power over waters to turn them to blood and to strike the earth with all plagues as often as they desire. Thank you, Charlene. Thank you, Charlene. Kuna um, na kusema, because I want us to read Kidogo Kidogo. Anyone with something to say based on what Shalin has read as I share this photo? I'm trying to summarize it in words. Yes. My two witnesses will prophesy for 1260 days clothed in sackcloth. By the way, 1260 days actually speak of three and a half years as all this judgment is happening you find that these people will be there still preaching so my question is who are these two witnesses who are these two witnesses As I wait for someone to answer, let me say this. According to Revelation chapter 11, by there there's a speculation that is said that the Antichrist uh, might be Jew. This is a speculation. Don't get me wrong. They are saying that the Antichrist might be Jew. And this is the reason as to why, because like everything is happening around Jerusalem. Um, if, if you look at the world today, Jerusalem is being fought. Jerusalem and Israel is being fought every now and then because it's about occupying that place, the central place. You find different religions are actually fighting the Jewish people because of that place. And according to Revelation 11, the place of worship is Jerusalem. And now the temple will have been rebuilt um what is this called um, um research and also oral tradition and uh, external evidence external evidence are things that qualify the bible but are not in the bible and their tradition things that were written by writers kitambo they say that the temple was destroyed in ad ad 70 78 there the timeline and it was never built again the Jewish people don't have a place to worship. Jews are one place you could worship. They used to worship in the temple. During the times of Zerubbabel, the temple had been destroyed partly, but then it was, it was rebuilt 
and you find also the times of Nehemiah there were times that the 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 temple in Jerusalem was in ruins and there's only one temple so the temple was destroyed and i think it's Matthew 20 20 or 24 it says that the temple was so beautiful that it had precious stones in the bricks manzimbaka was say the romans who livunja everything they left no stone unturned it was so beautiful looking at it from whichever angle and it had precious stones it had many many things that made it look beautiful so the temple was destroyed and tradition says that the children of israel don't have a place to worship i want us to have this in mind also the book of john chapter 4 where jesus was having the conversation with the samaritan woman that true worshipers genuinely nini will worship him in spirit and in truth and she was speaking as a samaritan but also spoke in the aspect of jews because the jews used to worship in the temple the temple was the place of worship there is a difference between a temple and a synagogue a synagogue is a place for instruction and teaching temple was a place for worship and now you find that the temple has been destroyed so jews don't go to the temple they go to synagogues if you come to nairobi there's a jewish synagogue you go to whichever place there's a synagogue there's only one temple and this temple was destroyed so as you continue to to find and um, to 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 learn that jews haven't been worshiping and i mentioned that tribulation means jacob's trouble and jacob is israel the reason as to why i'm saying that is because israel had turned away from god the jews don't believe in the new testament they only believe in the old testament that's why there's something called double fulfillment the things that are in revelation you find them in the book of daniel and one of the reasons as to why it is so is because these people used to believe that jesus would come they were under oppression in the roman in the, under the romans under the babylonians and all these people they knew that jesus would come the way david came as a man of war as in atakama kichafua wase akika as in akifight wase na maswad na vitu kaizo but jesus came as a prince of peace that was the discrepancy that was where they they never believed in who jesus was up to today but now you see in the in the book of revelation 11 when it comes to the time that the antichrist will demand worship this is where it will hit them and the bible says and all israel all israel all the jewish people by birth they will know ah uh-uh. manze jesus ni ule alikuwa sha come jesus ni ule msi alikam kama prince of peace and sasa the antichrist from revelation 11 um 12 going onwards you will find that now there's a beast there's a dragon there's a woman there's a prostitute all these people are after the jews when the jews actually left the story they left about um, they they didn't carry the plan of god god now came to the gentiles and say so to find gentiles were turned away from from god and uh, and now the temple is being rebuilt now in revelation 11 the jews are fascinated by the gentiles built under the protection of the antichrist antichrist are going involved in all this within the first half of tribulation is when all this take place people will see it as a church but it's not the church that is a wrong interpretation that is a wrong inclination this is the actual temple the actual temple that i was talking about if we are saying that this is the church that means rapture has not happened but rapture had already happened in the book of revelation chapter 4 and chapter 5 revelation in may happen and by the way just know that what john was recording is something that is happening in a span of 3 and 1/2 and 3 and 1/2 when you join them together together it's seven years and they're divided into two halves showing the intensity 
we will continue to read and see the magnitude of the wrath of God. Manze God sasa ana release ana unleash and I will explain the the meaning of the word wrath in that context. Anyone with a question up to there? Let's turn to the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 4. Let's turn to 2 Thessalonians 3 to 4 and someone to open Luke 21:24. Turn to 2 Thessalonians 3 to 4 and then Luke 21:24. I want 2 Thessalonians first and then Luke 21 next. Second Thessalonians 2, verse 3 to 4, and then Luke 21, 24. Second Thessalonians 2, 3 to 4. Let no one deceive you in any way for that day will not come unless the rebellion comes first and the man of lawlessness is revealed the son of destruction who opposes and exalts exalts himself against every so-called god or object of worship so that he takes his seat in the temple of god be god mm -hmm. okay thank you tashi luke 21 24 Luke 21:24 They will fall by the sword and be taken as prisoners to all the nations. Jerusalem will be trampled on by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. Okay. The antichrist will break his agreement with Israel and will use the temple for his own diabolical purposes. This is what Tashi had read. And we will find out more in Revelation 13, you know, about the beast. And by that, there are two beasts. They are different beasts. Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles as per what Victor has read in Luke 21, 24. And this began in 606 BC, before Christ, when Babylon began to devastate Judah and Jerusalem until Jesus Christ returns to deliver the holy city and redeem Israel. This is also according to Zechariah chapter 14. And now we go to the two witnesses. Who are the two witnesses? Who are they? Who are the two witnesses? Okay, I can start off by saying, uh, according to my research, the two witnesses are not yet known. Again, according to my research, the two witnesses are not yet known. Yes, some say uh, from the Old Testament, one including Elijah, Sujuna, Nungine. But um, to the someone I watched, from the someone I watched, uh, the two witnesses are yet to be known. Ni watu watazaliwa na iyo siku watatumika na mungu kufanya miujiza. Kitukai. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Lenkai. Someone else, who are the two witnesses? Who are the two witnesses? Was your gope could try? Who 
who are the two witnesses who do you think they are who are they anyone since i'm using my phone let me try ruben eh koima and subira maria dorin nyambu naela morin miriam anyone who are the two witnesses what do you think the two witness witnesses are okay for sina is a same way like elijah okay i did a research and uh, they were saying about elijah and enoch uh, for the part of enoch i, I couldn't like really grasp it what but at least i got one scripture to support why one of them might be elijah mm. from the book of malachi chapter 4 and verse 5 if i can read mm-hmm. that it's saying behold i'll send you elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the lord so i don't know if one of them might be elijah but uh, any of just trying <laughs> okay thank you for trying yeah. anyone else anyone else someone from the old or new testament and someone let me just read what wangeshi has posted someone from the old or new testament and someone from the present times okay okay let me let me explain this um first let me continue verse Seven, I think it's verse 7 of Revelation 11. Verse 7 of Revelation 11. Um, verse 6 says, These men have power to shut up the sky so that it will not rain during the time they are prophesying. And they have power to turn the waters into blood and to strike the earth with every kind of plague as as often as they want let me try get a picture um you know some of us will interpret um as in if you try to attack them they breathe fire as in if you try whatever thing they will take you down let me let me there's something i had downloaded yes that one maybe you can see that one um someone someone was saying that that's them i don't know if it's literal fire um, but let me continue. Now, when they had finished their testimony, the beast that comes up from the abyss will attack them and overpower and kill them. Their bodies will lie in the street of the great city, which is figuratively called Sodom and Egypt, where also their Lord was crucified. For three and a half days, men from every people, tribe, language and nation will gaze on their bodies and refuse them burial they were not given a decent burial the inhabitants of the earth remember we spoke about the inhabitants of the earth these are people that are not living a godly life these are people that are against christ and they are worshiping the beast the inhabitants of the earth will gloat over them and will celebrate by sending each other gifts it's like they're having a Christmas because these two prophets had tormented those who live on the earth. Verse 11, but after three and a half days, a breath of life from God entered them and they stood on their feet and terror struck those who saw them. Then they heard a loud voice from heaven saying, come up here. And they went up to heaven in a cloud while their enemies looked on. Let me explain. Now this is also um, this is also um, speculation. And the two witnesses, they actually minister during the first half of tribulation, 1260 days. And Jerusalem will then be overrun by Gentiles for 42 months. 
the two prophets they were actually calling um nations nations speaks of people to repent and to turn from god these people had turned away from god they were worshiping the beast and the church had been taken i want you to imagine of how the world it is now as in people are turning away from god we spoke about it in the book of second timothy and we are finding that it's getting to a time that how bad will it be if the church is restraining how bad will it be at that time as in it will be so so bad it will be so so bad that evil will continue to prevail another thing is these two prophets will perform miracles of judgment and they will remind us of moses and elijah it will remind us of the miracles that they performed and we find these miracles we know what moses did as in when it comes to like the plagues we know what elijah did as in he prayed and he stopped the the economy of an agricultural nation we find that elijah as in he outran chariots and kings in those days had the best chariots and this is in exodus chapter 7 verse 14 to 18 another one is in first kings 17 verse 1 there's another one the the miracles and the judgment second kings chapter 1 verse 11 to 12 these people also they perform ministry under the power of the holy spirit and that is what he was talking about john was talking about in hebrews uh, sorry in revelation 11:4 these are the two olive trees olive trees speak of anointing anointing and the two lampstands that stand before the lord on the earth as in they were they were moving in the power of the holy spirit moving in the power of the holy spirit and i want us to think of how important it is to move in the power of the holy spirit september 26th we are going to do something called an outpouring the second chapter and uh for those who attended the first one as in you saw how god moved in that place how people were healed how people were delivered how people started to speak in other language in tongues and how people as in didn't didn't go the way they came and uh, i want us to think of how important it is to live and to move in the power of the holy spirit there is so much more that you can be able to do there is so much more that you can accomplish imagine these two people are living in a time where the church is not there people are against god there's so much evil as in just think of of the wicked place you can think and they even speaking of sodom and egypt imagine you're combining um sodom and um um and and egypt as in that's how wicked it is and uh some interpreters don't take them as literal individuals these two people they see them as representatives of god's laws given through moses and prophet elijah who spoke of things that will be fulfilled by jesus and these interpreters regard the witnesses as church that will cause conviction a church that will expose sin a church that will convince people of their guilt this means that the church is still in the world if we go by that interpretation but i will say we won't go by that let me read on the comments i thought that with the church rapture the people left will be more repentant than sinful also in those times will the grace or mercy of the lord still be there i had mentioned i think it's in revelation chapter 9 it speaks about the inhabitants of the earth you see the things that are happening in our world today it's like evil is like being the order of the day people don't fear evil people don't fear doing the wrong thing like what we read in the book of um um second timothy chapter 4 as in people people don't fear anything 
we find that in our world today, something called dogmatism is what is thriving. And people want to do things in their own way. People want to do things. People want to, to be like gay. People want to be lesbian. People want to be whichever thing you want to do. If you want to be binary, if you don't want to go to church, as in people are doing things their own way. And there's a place in the book of Joshua that says, as in, it's like a generation that was raised without the principle and the precepts of God. And this is the world that we live in today. People are walking away from church. And the church is the one that is restraining evil from progressing. From progressing. Someone said that it is uh, um, 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 evil pre prevails because the righteous do nothing. Imagine if the church is taken away, evil will thrive, kabisa, kabisa. People will be free to do anything. I, I challenge us to watch this movie called Pilgrim's Progress. It's an animation and it's on YouTube. Just watch. There's a place that this man who is a pilgrim and is on a journey goes to a place called Vanity Fair. If you are not having fun, if you're not doing the, the wicked things, you are actually put in prison. You are thrown into prison and you're supposed to be killed. People are having sex. People are doing all manner of wicked things. And this is after the church had been taken. Yes, I will say there are some people that will be repentant. Um, and I remember we read, I think it was in eight or nine, People were fleeing away from God. They were running away from God. Imagine when the, 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 there's a mountain that was taken away, land, uh, land was taken away, but people were running so that they would hide away from God. Also in those times, the grace or mercy of the Lord, will, will it still be there? I will say this. The Bible says, seek God while he may be found. And this is the time to seek God. This is the time that we can speak to people to seek God because um, Jesus even spoke about it in the book of Matthew. He said that if the days have not been shortened, no one will survive. This is the only time that we can seek God. During that time of revelation, it is more of judgment. It is more of judgment. And the mercy, um, someone, someone used to talk about the mercy seat as in blood is dripping and as in it's becoming difficult because the wrath of God, it's like boiling. And the wrath of God is from a point of him being away from sin. The wrath of God is from a place of holiness. I hope I've answered your question. Um, let me continue. Um, what Reuben said, some cite Malachi chapter 4, verse 5 to 6, as one of the witnesses as Elijah. But someone to turn to the book of Matthew 17, 10 to 13. Matthew 17, 10 to 13, and another person to the book of John 1, 21. Matthew 17, 10 to 13, another person, John 1, 21. And lastly, one I will read Luke 1, 16 to 17. Matthew, Matthew 17, 10 to 13. And then look at John 1, 21. And then I'll read Luke 1, 16 to 17. Okay, Fika, please, Soma. Matthew 17, 10 to 13. The second one is John 1, 21. And then I'll read Luke 1, 16 to 17. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, Matthew 17, 10 to 13 from NLT. Jesus replied, Elijah is indeed coming fast to get everything ready. But I tell you, Elijah has already come but he wasn't recognized and they chose to abuse him. And in the same way, they will also make the son of man suffer. Then the disciples realized he was talking about John the Baptist. Mm -hmm. Aya, yeah. um, John 1, 21. John 1, 21, NIV version. 
They asked him, then who are you? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Okay. And then um, please read verse 25, John 1, 25. Verse 25. Um, it starts at 24. Now the Pharisees, the Pharisees who had been sent questioned him. Why then do you baptize if you are not the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? Okay, let me read Luke 1, 16 to 17. The Bible says, many of the people of Israel will he bring back to their Lord, to, their, to the Lord their God. And he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the disobedient of to the wisdom of the righteous to make ready a people prepared for the lord let me explain some cite malachi 4 5 to 6 as one of the witnesses as elijah but jesus applied the prophecy to john the baptist this is what was read in matthew 17 10 to 13. john the baptist however denied that he was Elijah returned to earth. This is what was read in John chapter 1 verse 21 and verse 25 and also in Luke chapter 1 16 to, 20, 16 to 17. So this confusion may be explained in part by realizing that though that through Israel's history God sent special messengers, in quotes, Elijahs, to call his people to repentance. So in this sense, Malachi's prophecy will be fulfilled by the witnesses, but not Elijah. Okay, twenty another, another speculation. Some say that it is Enoch and Elijah. The reason as to why they say it's Enoch and Elijah is because Enoch never tasted death, Elijah never tasted death. The Bible says that Enoch walked with God until he was no more. Imagine you walk with God until yani hauko, yani unapotea. Wasewa limtafuta. And Elijah, he was carried in a chariot and he ascended to heaven. So these people say that it's Elijah and Enoch because they never tested death so to them they say that they will come and die after finishing their time because they qualify i think it's hebrews 10 27 to 29 that you have to die you once you are born you have to die um all this by the way are speculations the third speculation is instead of relating the mystery the ministry of the witnesses to Moses and Elijah, the angel who spoke to John connected their ministry with Zerubbabel and Joshua the high priest. This you can read at your own free time in the book of Zechariah chapter 4. These two people, Zerubbabel and Joshua, they helped to reestablish Israel in Palestine and to rebuild the temple. It was a discouraging task and Gentiles made it more difficult. These are now the inhabitants of the world. But God still provided special power. They needed to get the work done. God's work is never easy, by the way, all the time. But I want us to know that God empowers us. And he empowers us with the Holy Spirit. Let me um, say that. These two witnesses, I'll go back to what Lenkai said, people that will be born, people that we don't know, but it's like they're being called Elijahs because of the miracles and the things that they performed. These people died after finishing their ministry and testimony. And this speaks of God's obedient servants. It's like they are immortal until their work is finished. I think it's Acts chapter 13, verse 36, that says, David, after finishing his time, slept. To sleep means to die, because you don't have anything else to do in this world. As in, you come, you fulfill your purpose, and then you go back to God. 
and look at the life of Jesus. Jesus came, lived 33 and a half as what people say, and then he went to the cross, died, um, resurrected, ascended to heaven. And it was funny that he ascended in a cloud, how God actually speaks. And uh, this shows of how the Christian life is. When you are living a life of service to God, there's nothing that can take you down. And that speaks of no weapon that is formed against you will prosper. No weapon, nothing that the enemy fashions. Yes, weapons will be formed, but it will not prosper until you accomplish your time in this world. There is no way you can be able to be exterminated because God has an agenda and God works with his people. So we may see from one side that these people, it's like the enemy had defeated them. No, they had accomplished their time. They had accomplished their purpose. 